I was just in a predicting kind of mood at the start of this week. And depending on how this goes, I'm either going to mute the comments and hide the video or... I'm going to bring this up every three weeks for the rest of my life because today it is, I'm looking, it's it's May 6th, so you're listening to this on May 7th. I'm going to do my best to predict the 2024-2025 NFL playoffs for the upcoming season. Schedule's not even out. Don't care. We're going to early predict the playoffs culminating in Super Bowl 59 in New Orleans, which you can watch right here on Fox next year. We're already counting down Super Bowl on Fox. Super Bowl 59. Let's get to it. Like I said, what's the worst that could happen? It could only haunt me for the rest of my days if I do a terrible job with this. But we're going to break down the playoff field a way too early look now that the draft is over. Can I get the graphic on the screen? Can I get my teams? We're going to start in the AFC Make it real easy for you. My division winners, my division champions, number one seed. I don't think the Chiefs are going to experience a drop-off again. I got them winning the AFC West and the bye week. I think this has the potential to be a better team than the one that just won the Super Bowl. Even with some questions, we can get to it. Number two, I buy the Houston Texans. I think they are for real. The addition of Stephon Diggs, not to mention some much-needed reinforcements on defense, C.J. Stroud buying all the stock I can. I got the Texans winning the South as the two. As the three seed, maybe my my first upset, yes, it is the Cincinnati Bengals winning their division once again. A healthy Joe Burrow makes the difference. I low-key love what they did on defense. I think the Bengals are going to be back with a vengeance in 2024. Maybe this is a surprise. I don't think so. At the four seed, I've got the Bills maintaining their stranglehold on the division. I I ain't just giving it up easy. Like, the Bills have been running this thing too long for me to just think somebody else is going to snatch it from them. You got to prove it to me, Jets, Dolphins, Patriots. My wild card, Ravens fans, don't be mad at me. I've got serious questions about your offensive line. And you lost Mike McDonald to the Seattle Seahawks. I think losing the D coordinator could be a big deal. I got the Ravens as my first wild card. I do have Aaron Rodgers leading the Jets to the playoffs if he can just stay healthy. Supposedly, he's full go for OTAs. That seems like it bodes well for the season. I'm going to take a chance on the old guy. Taking a bit of a flyer with the Indianapolis Colts as my seven seed. That's right. I've got the AFC South sending two teams to the playoffs. And this is just a vote of confidence in what we saw from Anthony Richardson. They were just flashes, but they were so impressive. If he can stay healthy, I think the Colts have a great shot. They nearly made the playoffs with Gardner Minshew. If Richardson is available and showing the flashes consistently, I think this could be a playoff team. They brought back all of their key players. Michael Pittman Jr., DeForest Buckner is back. Kenny Moore is still there. Adding Adonai Mitchell to the offense. I like this team a lot if Anthony Richardson is healthy. I think he will be, and I think the Colts could be a surprise playoff team as a result. Flipping over to the NFC, I had a hard time not going chalk. Like, you always hear the stories that half the playoff field turns over every year. You can count on two or three teams to make it that didn't make it the year before. It's hard to find those teams in the NFC. You'll see what I mean. In the top seed, the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't think their collapse last year was football-related. I think it was vibes-related. But the vibes are sky-high in Philly with the additions that they've made, the free agents they've brought in. They've got two much better coordinators than the guy they had la- guys they had last year, Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio. This is one of the best rosters in the league. They were 11-1 and before it all went to hell last year. I think they'll pick up where they left off when they were a good football team. I, I don't even feel that bad about that prediction. We'll see. Number two, I don't think it's going to be a huge drop-off for the San Francisco 49ers, but this is a very veteran team. I think you always have to worry about injury with guys like this. I know that's not, that's not fun to say, but it's something that's on my radar. How does the wide receiver room gel with rookie Ricky Pearsall and the rumors about Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel being potential trade candidates? Dre Greenlaw is coming back from the Achilles injury in the Super Bowl. There's just enough questions here to make me wonder. 
but I still think the Niners are going to be one of the best teams in the NFL. At number three, the Detroit Lions. I like them to pick up exactly where they left off. Do you see what I'm saying? Doesn't this playoff field start to look very, very familiar? Lions doing their thing at the three seed. I think we all agree. We would guess the NFC South is going to be the four seed. I picked the Atlanta Falcons. I'll be honest. I wanted to pick the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I love what Tampa's done this year. But again, from year to from year to year, you see so much turnover. I think somebody new does have to make it. I think it'll be the Atlanta Falcons this year with Kirk Cousins. My wild cards, again, starting to look awfully familiar. The Green Bay Packers, once again, a wild card, but a very good wild card. I think the Packers are an 11 or 12 win team, but somebody has to be the runner up in that division. A very similar story for the Dallas Cowboys. They won the division. They were the two seed last year with what they've done or not done in 2024. I think they take a slight step back. I think this team is still good enough to win nine, 10, maybe 11 games. But with the way Philly looks, that still lands them as a wild card. And then at seven, my my upset pick, I guess. I, like I said, I'm trying to find new teams to make the playoffs in the NFC. And I'm going to roll with the guy Henry McKenna and I said would win NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year, Caleb Williams. The bar is low in Chicago. And if he jumps above it, I could absolutely see the Bears being a nine maybe 10 win playoff team. Don't forget how good the defense was after they traded for Montez sweat. They held on to Jalen Johnson. We've talked enough about the offense. We know what it could be capable of. I absolutely think the Chicago bears are a team you have to take seriously as a playoff team. And then we jump to the super bowl. As we said on Fox in new Orleans, super bowl 59 cannot wait First Super Bowl in my hometown since, I believe, the 2012 season. It's been a minute, and when we get there, oh, man, could it be fun. Because I've got the Kansas City Chiefs going for the three-peat against Jordan Love's Green Bay Packers, a rematch of Super Bowl One. I. I think people predicted this for years when Aaron Rodgers was the quarterback in Green Bay. It would be ironic if it happened with Jordan Love under center. But, man, what a bonanza this would be. Two legacy franchises, the Chiefs going for the three-peat, and I'm going to give it to them. I'm at the point where I just – I'm tired of betting against the Kansas City Chiefs. And like I said, they got a question to answer at left tackle. They did lose LeJarrius Sneed, but I think this team could be even better than the one that just beat the 49ers. So, yes, I'm going to roll with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs in an unprecedented – NFL three-peat. If this ages poorly, don't at me because I'll just, I'll mute it. I don't want to hear it. But if it ages well, then I will be tweeting it or posting it into your social media feeds for the rest of my life. This has been my way too early predictions. Thank you for your time. Put that, put a pin in that until we'll say November when we really have a gauge on how smart or dumb all of that looks.